All right, welcome back. It's Sailor's Footy Tip Time, and it is week two of the finals. That's right. Oh, deep into the finals, week two. Panthers, Broncos get their deserved week off after putting in some fantastic performances. Now we've got two games this round, and they're absolute coin tosses. They're going to be blockbusters. We've got the Storm up against the Roosters. What a rivalry we've got there. Two of the most winningest teams. Winningest? Yeah, we'll go with that. Winningest teams in the last decade. Um, up against each other at Amy Park in Melbourne, which is going to obviously lean towards Melbourne. And then the second game is the Warriors at home against the Knights. After 10 in a row, is this where the bandwagon stops for either team? Oh, wow. This is absolutely fantastic footy. And I'm so excited. Friday and Saturday games. Who knows who's going to win? Absolutely. Throw your comments down below who you think is going to win these games. But let's have a let's have a quick look at the team list and unpack where we where we where we think uh, the results going to go. So starting with Storm versus Roosters. Now, uh, some some changes across the back line for both teams, and I think this could be the absolute telltale because you know the forwards. They're pretty evenly matched. There's no absolute standouts. The most experienced forward in the storm is Christian Welsh, the captain. I wouldn't say he's had the best of years. Um, you know, lining up against someone like Lindsay Collins, which is having the year of his life. Um, you know, Victor Radley always going to put out a 10 out of 10 performance. Big game player. Ellie Katoa has been fantastic for Melbourne. And obviously, Harry Grant up against his, one of his best mates, Brandon Smith, like, that's an absolute awesome matchup. Um, the bench is pretty evenly matched. Obviously, you've got Big Nelson coming off the bench. But, you know, you've also got Angus Crichton and Terrell May for the Roosters, which is which is fantastic for impact. I, I really think, you know, you've got Munster up against Kiri, Sam Walker in the halves, who's been absolutely fantastic since he's come back. Tyrone Wishart lining up at sevens with Jerome Hughes is probably the biggest out of the game. Um, that's obviously going to have some effect. Grant and Munster need to step up big time in his absence, and so does Nick Meany. You know, you've got the captain of the Roosters, Tedesco, which has been playing absolutely fantastic football the last month or so. It comes down to the back five, honestly, and obviously Tedesco is going to make the big difference. Nick Meany's been absolutely fantastic this year in Pappy's absence. Um. You know, Roosters are still without Tupo. Um, Justin Olam and Remus Smith come back into the right side for the Storm, which is probably could make the absolute difference. Will Warbrick on the other wing has been fantastic. Seve lines up in the centres. Now you look at the wingers and centres for the Roosters. Now you've got uh, the young winger called Ponga. Um, he's he's been Good and bad um, for the Roosters. you got Jackson Polo on the other wing, which has been fairly solid. Corey Allen and Paul Morowski in the centres. Allen sort of been bouncing in and out of the team. Like he, he is, he'd probably make first grade in another team. And Paul Morowski, now, this I think could be the key for the Roosters. Now, Morowski has actually played in a few uh, grand finals. For the Storm and the Panthers, I believe. This could be the, the Roosters' lucky charm. Now, I think that's why he's been named. I, I really think ahead of Drew Hutchison, who's a very, very good player, namely extended reserves bench. Moroski is also a kicking option as well. I feel like this could be the lucky horseshoe for the Roosters. He's he's been there before, and it seems like every team that he pops up in each year wins a premiership. So, hey, this this could be the difference. I mean, I think I think someone like Sam Walker is probably going to be the difference. Cam Munster is probably going to be the difference, but I just feel like Paul Momorowski is a lucky rabbit's foot here. Um, this is going to be an absolutely fantastic game, and it's so close to call. Melbourne Storm do not play two bad games in a row, but the Roosters just keep on finding it. To to be in the position that they are after the season that they've had, 
to win the second week of the finals. Like, will they make top four? Like, playing in Amy Park is so hard. But if anyone could do it, it's these, it's these roosters. I'm like, Storm has not really been good for a good month, but I kept saying, you know, don't discount the Storm, don't discount the Storm. Is the effect of Pappenhausen get, getting injured again last week going to have a massive effect? Um, you know, Xavier Coates being out as well, Jerome Hughes. Yeah, I'm probably going to be wrong. Now, I'm going to go with the Roosters here. You know, I picked the Roosters for my grand final at the start of the year, and I and I feel like the Paul Momorowski effect is going to be their lucky horseshoe to get them through to week three of the finals here. So I'm going to go to the Roosters. Not confidently at all. Don't put your house on it. But I'm back in the Roosters. Can't believe I'm saying that, but I'm on the Roosters. So, yeah. Wow. What a game it's going to be. Anyway, let's move on to Saturday. Oh, wow. The two Cinderella stories of the season. And, you know, imagine if they met in the grand final. But this is, this is wow. What a game this is going to be. The Knights were, looked like they were gone. They fought back. They were in front. It looked like they were going to coast it. The Raiders were back. It went to extra time. Like, everything that could happen in that game happened. And, you know, extra 10 minutes of play. Uh, the... The Warriors sort of got dusted up by the Panthers and it's probably bad for their confidence, but no Sean Johnson. I mean, I know it's a team sport, but it's it's Sean Johnson's absolute season of all seasons. Um, I, you know, there's still some cloud of doubt, but I think they're going to give him to the very last minute to, uh, to prove his fitness. You know, if he doesn't, you're going to move uh, Dylan Walker into the seven again and then maybe... Pull someone off the bench. I'm not really sure. Maybe a Bunty Afoa or even a, you know, a Freddie Lussig. you got to think this is the the extended reserves bench is, is really speaks volumes to where the Warriors have come this year. Because, you know, someone like Bunty Afoa is probably one of your first names in your forward pack over the last couple of years. And he's on the extended reserves bench. He hasn't really played that badly this year, but... People are just playing better than him. Um, you know, you've got Adam Fennell Blake and Mitch Barnett up in the front row. You've got Marana Niakore and Jackson Ford in the second row where Afol could also play and obviously Tohu Harris uh, lining up there in uh, in the 13. Looking over to Newcastle, you know, Hastings out. Adam Clune, you know, every time he's come in, he's done the job. And Tyson Gamble has just kept going to another level. He was absolutely fantastic last week. Oh, I can't say enough good things about Tyson Gamble. He was just kind of like a a Mr. Fix-It, sort of like who'd come in, sort of if the Harbs combinations weren't working or there was injuries or something, you know, obviously with the, with the Tigers and then the Broncos and obviously even with the Knights. But, you know, he's really nailed down his position this year. And he's just he's just keeps evolving and evolving and like, you know, you gotta think back to the start of Tyson Gamble's career. He was sort of earmarked as is a really sort of uh player of the future. And I just think some people take a little bit longer to mature and sort of into first graders. They just need to be given the time and it's a it's a cutthroat business these days where you don't have time, you know. If you play three or four bad games, you you you're thrown on the scrap heap and you know the the next kid's coming up, so it's it's good that he's really really uh found his form this year. I'm so happy for him. Uh like looking through the team lists again, like I think your forwards your forwards are pretty well matched. I I, I would sort of tip it in the favor of of the Warriors because Adam from Will Blake, um, Nia Kore has just been so so good this year. Obviously with Jackson Ford as well, Tahoe Harris. I just I I think I think the the Warriors definitely win the uh, win the forwards battle. You look at the interchange bench, you know, Walker up against Kurt Mann, like Jazz Tavanga against Daniel Saifidi, Siren and Hetherington, Curran, Croker. Like the benches are so evenly matched. You, you know, you're uh, you got look at your halves. You got uh, Johnson and Martin up against Clune and Gamble, and obviously I was just praising how good Gamble's been this year, but Sean Johnson makes up for a Tyson Gamble and Adam Clune. 
Tamari Martin's there. Uh, he would play well, but I think Johnson alone covers those two. Just love Sean Johnson if you haven't already uh, figured out. The back five, oh, this is a fan. This is beautifully, beautifully matched up. You got you got Chance up against Kalen. That's that's just beautiful. Kalen probably get, obviously gets a nod over there, especially with his recent form. But Chance has been absolutely fantastic all year. He's been so solid, and you know the Warriors are better with him in the team. Uh, obviously, Dallin lines up against Greg Martu, so you know strong try scoring wingers and then the other wing is, is Dom Young up against Montoya and I think this is a beautiful beautiful battle like they're big two big strong wingers you know good in the air and I think Montoya is going to take this personally and just really take it to Dom Young the centers Barry and Pompey up against Gagai and Bess you know strong power centers I, I feel like this is the, the Dane Gagai, Adam Pompey. Uh, it won't get talked about as much, but I think that's going to be a key matchup. Pompey needs to stand up against Gagai. I think Gagai is going to play an absolutely crucial role. And if he gets a, if he gets a better of Adam Pompey, uh, the Knights are going to do very, very well. Get get him, get him, uh, get him, his winger on the outside, Dom Young, and it's really going to make an effect on the game. Oh, like you're, you've been up for 10 weeks straight, the Knights, like, Three months ago, you know, the Knights were in the conversation about the spoon. And now, you know, they're they're two wins away from a grand final. So it's just absolutely amazing. Like winning that many games, like looking at the atmosphere. Like I just think, you know, they're going over they're they're in enemy territory now. Like just how how much the whole country is behind the Warriors. I just you know, fairy tales don't always come true, but I, I, I feel like, I feel like the Warriors knew they were beat last week, and you know, you sort of switched off a little bit. Whereas, you know, the Knights had to fight, claw, just hammer to the very, very last second to get that, um, to get that win. Oh, I don't think Caelan Pong is a hundred percent. I think they are. Uh, I think his, his shoulders would still be a little bit sore. Look, I'm, I'm going to have to lean towards the Warriors here, like. I think I think they're gonna I, th- I think they're gonna win and I think they're gonna take on the Broncos next week. So it's uh yeah. I've just gotta stay on that Warriors bandwagon. I think they can do it against the Knights. I think the Knights have been fantastic and I applaud them of what they've done this season, but I think this is where it ends for them. Um yeah. Like absolutely for week two of the finals, I like I always look at week two of the finals and I'm like Every year, I'm like, meh. Like, but this year, this is these two games are absolutely fantastic. I'm so excited. Like this, this weekend of footy is going to be absolutely fantastic. So, look, they're going to both be close games. So, I'm going to take the Roosters in a coin flip and the Warriors to beat the Knights, but both close games. Now, it's time for a little hunt of the week. Now, I've got some, I've got got one on each game like why not it's it's uh it's finals footy you've you've saved your money well you probably haven't saved your money but there's not eight games to bet on there's only two so let's have a little bit of swing on this so now what i've done for the first game now this is some good prices off off some same game multis that's right here we go so i'm i can't i'm not betting on the result here so i'm gonna take couple of forwards to get a try and I'm going to bet under the line which is about 40 and a half so Elikatoa and uh, Siwa Wong anytime try scorers both of them to score anytime and under 40 and a half that'll get you about $48 on sports bet holy dooly and then you probably get a power play on that as well so anytime uh, same game multi that's right Eli Katoa, Siwa Wong, top match points under 40 and a half. And that is absolutely juicy. That's going to, that is, and then put a little power play on that. All right. And I've got another one, second game. All right. So I'm going to take Warriors 1 to 12 here. I was going to leave it out, but I just, I'm going to put it in. Now back to Gagai, Dane Gagai, anytime try scorer. He hasn't been in exactly try scoring form this season, but I think he's going to get one here. 
And then the other anytime try scorer, obviously Adam Fanua Blake, the try scoring front rower. So add those together and you're still going to get about $50 on that. Like just a three, one to 12. Adam Fanua Blake, dang that guy, acts, gets you 50 bucks. So I was cheeky tenor on that. Like huge. Now, wow, as I said before, what an absolutely fantastic. Oh, second round of finals footy. If your team's still in it, good luck. If if you're on a bandwagon, good luck as well. I don't know. NRL, how good. Loving the footy. I can't wait uh, to see who, who gets over the line here. Um, enjoy. If you made it to the end, thank you. Appreciate you. Follow us on TikTok, Instagram. Subscribe here. Something. Anyway, say less footy. Peace out. Yo.